Hey everyone, so today we're going to cover acid base. Um, this is at the request of Sarah Wynn, um, who's a psychiatrist out there, but I was a psychiatrist as well, so Sarah, it's not too late to come over to the dark side of intensive care. Um, but for today, um, I have Nikhil here who's going to be my learner for our acid base discussion. So uh, before we even begin to do the hard stuff, I want to start with defining what we're talking about and start talking about some normal values. So to begin with, Nikhil, what do you think of as a normal value for your pH? Uh, 735, 745. Okay, so I put in quotes normal because we're going to be rigid today. All right. The way I do acid base is going to over diagnose some stuff and be very mathematically rigid, but you're going to get to the right answer every time and you're going to know what to do for your patient every time based on what we learn from it. Okay, I'm just going to make okay. it a little simpler by picking one number. Okay. If you had to pick one number for your normal PCO2, what would that be? 40. Okay, beautiful. How about your normal bicarb? 24. And how about your normal anion gap? 12. Okay. So I'm going to put here uh, three times your albumin. And a normal albumin is four. So you're absolutely right that your anion gap normally is gonna be 12, but in a lot of critically ill patients, our albumin drops, and in which case we wanna alter what we think of as our normal anion gap, okay? But for the purposes of today's talk, we're gonna use 12 as our normal anion gap. Cool? Um, so if you were hoping to learn a lot about organic chemistry and biochemistry and buffers and all of that, you're not gonna learn that. Sweet. You're gonna learn how to help your patients at the bedside with an arterial blood gas, okay? All right, so let's talk about the different disorders we're addressing, first of all. So the main one we think about most, especially in an ICU environment, is an anion gap metabolic acidosis. And we think of mud pilers as being the things that cause that. Can you tell me what some of those are? So methanol, uremia. Perfect, uremia. I don't remember what D is right now. Okay. Uh, oh man, this is looking bad. I, I, All right. Well, let's go so over some of the other ones. So I always think of diabetic ketoacidosis as my DKA. And then with that, I usually think about starvation ketosis as well. That's where to go together. Ketosis. Okay. And we used to think of P as being peraldehyde. Um, but it can also be uh, pyroglutamic acid because um, we don't really use peraldehyde anymore. So we'll sort of think of it more like that. Do you know what I is? Isonizide. Yeah, so INH, isoniazide. L is our lactic acidosis. You know what our E is? Ethanol. Yeah, perfect. Ethanol. And then I throw an R in there. Not everybody does. I throw an R in there for renal dysfunction because renal dysfunction can do a lot to your acid-base status, and I want you to just keep it in the back of your mind here. So renal issues, and then the last one? Salicylates. Perfect, salicylates. Okay, so a lot of our patients are gonna have one of these anion gap metabolic acidosis that brings them to the ICU, okay? So keep that in mind. How about our non-anion gap ones? So metabolic acidosis with a non-iron gas. So, yeah. Uh, more like uh, hyperchloridemia. Okay. So what would cause that if you're trying to think of specific causes of that? I think of like over-resuscitation. Okay. I'm going to say over-normal saline. <laughs> Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What else? Uh, I think you get it with some of the some some of the renal stuff, like RTAs do it. Yeah, perfect. Renal tubular acidosis. That's great. Another big one is diarrhea. Can cause it if you're losing a lot of your bicarb through your stool. That can do it. And an NG tube. So. No, we're gonna get to that one okay. next. We're not there yet. Um, but other things that you want to think about here is acetazolamide can do it. Amide. Ketozolamide and spironolactone are some other ones. Okay, so medications, diarrhea, renal tubular acidosis, or a whole lot of normal saline. Perfect. Perfect answers. Okay, so then I want to go from metabolic acidosis to things that cause a respiratory acidosis. 
What causes a respiratory acidosis? So respiratory acidosis means not breathing enough. Right. So what things so, make you not breathe enough? So opioids. Okay. I'm going to call that mental status because really any medicine that decreases your mental status is going to have you not breathe enough. What else? Uh, would we say weakness? Perfect. So neuromuscular weakness. What else? I always just want you to think of pulmonary problems that can cause that, right? Like if we just don't have enough room for gas exchange, things along those lines. So pulmonary, okay. yeah, pulmonary processes can do that. COPD is a great example, but many different ones can do it. But think of it as it's either a pulmonary problem or a neuromuscular problem or neurologic problem in general, okay? All right, cool. So that's all of our acidosis. You hit them all. Okay. Awesome. All right, so let's shift to the other side of the picture. What makes us have too much base now? What causes alkalosis? Uh, so I think of like overdiuresis. Yeah, perfect. So the biggest one you're gonna see bar none in an intensive care unit is gonna be what we call contraction alkalosis. And that just means someone doesn't have enough fluid or we diurese the heck out of them or whatever the case may be. Okay, what else? You said before, what'd you say before? NG2. Yeah, perfect. So NG2, or just in general, vomiting, if we're pulling a lot of acid out of our stomach, that can happen, okay? Those are really the big ones that I want you to keep in mind. There are some other ones, but a lot less common in the intensive care environment. And then how about a respiratory alkalosis? So in that scenario, we're like driving up the respiratory rate. Right? Yeah, perfect. So your increased respiratory rate, what causes that? Uh, so hyperventilating. Okay, so that I'm gonna call okay. your increased respiratory rate hyperventilating. What will make you do that? Um, so when people get sick, so doing sepsis. Okay, right great. Sepsis is a great example of it. What else? Uh, I don't know what else to... Okay, so sometimes when people get a lot of anxiety, or pain can do it. And then another thing that I want you to think about is salicylates can cause this. And actually liver failure can too. So keep those in mind. So it's a little bit different. Here we just think of respiratory acidosis as being things that just make you breathe less. But now we're adding sort of a couple other specific etiologies onto there. Okay? okay? So keep all of these in mind. My biggest pet peeve with acid-base disorders is we do all these calculations and all this math, but then we don't take the time to figure out what actually caused the under underlying disorder and figure out how to fix it, okay? So I want you to always keep these in mind as we do each problem, think, huh, what applies to my patient? What do I need to look for most closely? And what can I do something about? Cool? Yep. All right, so that is all of our etiologies. Now we're gonna actually do some cases. So while I erase, you guys get yourself a calculator and um, paper and pen, uh, and we're gonna work this stuff out, okay? Just want to let you know that this was the hardest thing on earth to me for my residency. Like I didn't get it for years. And finally someone taught it to me like this and it all clicked and made sense. So I'm gonna teach you what stuck with me, what I can do to this day, um, that makes the most sense to me. If you guys at home already have something that works for you, then stick with that. But this is sort of the only thing that's worked for me, okay? All right, so I gave you some numbers. Can you tell me the first seven numbers you have? Uh, 138, 4.8, 102, 14, 35, 1.4, sugar is 90, and then I have 7.31 and 29 right there. Okay, perfect. So our electrolytes, our pH, our PCO2, we know what our normal values are supposed to be for those things. I want you guys to keep in mind these should be drawn at the same time if you're gonna be doing calculations based on them, okay? So the first thing we always wanna do is look at our pH and see if that helps us decide what the issue is. So if you saw a pH of 7.3, lower than 7.4, acid. 
acid. Perfect. What's the next thing you look at to figure out what kind? Because we want to know if this is a respiratory acidosis or a metabolic acidosis. So look at the PCO2. Okay, perfect. So your PCO2 is lower, right? It's supposed to be 40. You're breathing off extra. Sped up your rate. I'm sorry? So that would make mean that it's metabolic, right? So if you're breathing off more, that would cause a respiratory alkalosis, but we're trying to figure out what caused the acidosis, okay? So we have a metabolic acidosis. Whenever we have a metabolic acidosis, I want you to do two things, okay? One, just put me right here. So first of all, this was sort of step one is acidosis. Step two is metabolic acidosis. And then we divide, and you can do either of these things, whichever one you want to do first. Can you for a second, can you pause? Can you write how you came up with it was a metabolic acidosis? Yeah, for sure. So yeah. I actually look at two things simultaneously okay. whenever I'm doing that. So my pH, I'm gonna look at my bicarb, and then my PCO2, okay? So my pH, if it's lower than 7.4, then I know it's acidosis, mm -hmm. right? If it's a metabolic acidosis, I would expect these two to go in the same direction and they're going in the same direction, right? And same here, right? So your PCO2 is going in the same direction that makes me think it's a metabolic okay. acidosis. Does okay. that make sense? Yep. Okay, beautiful. Great question, thanks. Okay, so two things I want you to do whenever this happens. One is we're gonna figure out our anion gap and the other one is that we're gonna figure out our compensation. Okay, so how do we calculate an anion gap? Four times, or three times the albumin. Or okay, so that's what a normal anion gap is. How it's do I figure out? Sodium minus chloride minus bicarb. All right, so sodium minus, and I sort of think of it this way, chloride plus bicarb. Okay, so if I'm gonna do that here, I have 138 minus 116, which I think is 22. You guys check me? Yeah, okay. So my anion gap here is 22. But we said a normal anion gap is 12, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna figure out the difference between this one and a normal one. So I call that my delta gap. So my delta gap equals 22 minus 12 equals 10. With me so far? Mm -hmm. You with me? All right, cool. So then I take one sentence here that I say to myself every time so that I understand what this number means, okay? So my delta gap is equal to me to my expected change in my bicarb, okay? Keep in mind that sentence, we're gonna use it for every example we do today. So my delta gap, my expected change in bicarb, what's a normal bicarb? 24. 24, okay? My expected change is 10, so therefore my expected bicarb would be what? 14. Perfect, right, which is exactly what it is, okay? So we that tells us that we have an anion gap metabolic acidosis and we don't have another metabolic disorder. We have only that. Okay. Okay, that makes sense? So we know metabolic-wise we've solved our problem. Now we have to figure out if, from a respiratory standpoint if we're compensating appropriately or not. Okay, what equation do we use for that? Do you know what that's called? Winters? Yeah, perfect. What's Winters formula? 1.5 times the bicarb plus eight. Okay, perfect. And then we think sort of plus or minus two, but like I said, I'm sort of rigid. I like to pick one normal number and go with it. So what does this equal? This Winters formula you 29. said. Well, what is it, uh, what does it represent? Oh what your PCO2 should be. Yeah, so your expected PCO2. And if we do that, 1.5 times 14 plus eight is 29, right? And our actual PCO2 is 29. So we have one disorder. We have an anion gap metabolic acidosis, that's it. Pick something for me that caused your patients and I got metabolic acidosis. Lactic acid. Okay, so this patient had a lactic acidosis. You're gonna fix it, probably with fluids, 
but you'll see, or stop some medication that's causing it, something like that. Perfect, great job. Okay, so that's the easiest one we got, but they all happen the exact same way. Whether we have one disorder or we have three disorders, we do the same thing. Okay. Okay, so let's do the next one. Give me what numbers you have for the next one. 141, 3.8, 105, 16, 14, 0.8, 99, 731, 23. Okay, beautiful. All right, so we're gonna do the exact same thing we just did, right? So. First thing we did was we determined what this told us. What does that tell us? Acidosis. What was the second thing we did? Metabolic versus respiratory. Okay, how did we figure that out? Uh, whether, so it went, the pH went down. Yep. So if the metabolic component, so the bicarb also went down, mm -hmm. so that makes it a metabolic acidosis. Beautiful. And then anytime we have a metabolic acidosis, what are the two things we do? We do an anion gap and look at compensation. Okay, so my anion gap, how do I calculate that? Uh, sodium minus chloride minus bicarb. Which equals what? 20. So that's my calculated anion gap. Then I have to figure out my delta gap, which is my calculated minus normal. So 20 minus 12 is eight. Okay, what does this represent? What is my delta gap? Say the sentence for me. My delta gap is my? Expected bicarb. Expected change. It's a key point, right? Expected change in bicarb. Okay. So a normal bicarb is? 24. My expected change is eight, which takes me down to what? 16. 16, okay. Exactly right, okay? So I have an anion gap metabolic acidosis. I don't have any other metabolic disorders. Okay. Perfect, all right. And then what's my winner's formula again? 1.5 times the bicarb plus eight. Okay, and what does that represent? Your PCO2. My expected PCO2. In this case, it's 16 times 1.5 takes us to 24, plus eight takes us to 32. Okay, so my expected PCO2 is 32. My actual PCO2 is 23. What does that mean? That means you're blowing off extra I'm blowing off extra CO2. Anytime I'm blowing off extra CO2, what's my disorder? That's a, a respiratory alkalosis. Beautiful. Respiratory alkalosis. So in this case, we have a patient who has an anion gap, metabolic acidosis, and a respiratory alkalosis. Okay. In your patient, what could have caused those two things? Salicylates. Perfect. Salicylates or what else? Uh, What's the bread and butter of the sepsis. ICU? Yeah, sepsis. This is what happens in sepsis. Exactly right. Okay, is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions about that so far? Yep. Okay, good. Makes sense? All right, perfect. All right, we got two more. You got it in you to do two more? Oof. Oof. Let's give it a shot because I think for these, just repetition is key. All right, give me the third one. 137. 3.7, 96, 10, 40, 1.4, 94, 726, 23. Okay. All right. Talk me through it. What's step one? Step one is acid or er, alkalosis, and so it's an acidosis. Perfect. Step two is metabolic versus respiratory. And? And so this goes in, so metabolic acidosis. Okay, Because the, there's acid there and then the bicarb is also down. Beautiful. 
So now we're going to look at the anion gap and the compensation. Okay. So the anion gap is the sodium minus the fluoride minus the bicarb. So, so that's 137 minus 96 minus 10. So minus 106, so 20, 31. 31. 31. Beautiful. Okay, so, so what's my next step? Uh, so expected anion gap is 12. So, so delta gap beautiful. is going to be 30. I want, to, I want to be careful what you said. So you said the expected anion gap. I want to, the normal, Nor okay. a normal anion gap because we're going to okay. figure out what the expected is. Okay. Okay. So your delta gap is 31 minus 12. 31 minus 12, which is 19. Which is 19. Okay. What does that number represent? That's your expected anion gap. It's your expected, it's your expected change in your bicarb. Okay, that's the one sentence that saved my neck in understanding this. Okay, that's why I'm really trying to drill that in. Okay, so that's your expected change in bicarb. So a normal bicarb is 24. 24. Acid makes it go lower. It's going expected to go nine lower. So we expect our bicarb to be. Uh, nine. Uh, five, right? 24 minus 19? Yeah, yeah. Right. So 24 is normal. My expected change is 19, which takes me to five. Okay. So I expect my bicarb to be five, but it's actually 10. What does that tell me? There's some other thing that's causing the, there's some other metabolic thing that's causing there's the. There's some other metabolic problem, right? And we decided that when we have an acidosis, our bicarb goes lower. But this time, we expected it to be five, but it's actually 10, so, so it goes higher. Alkalosis. Beautiful. So this person has an anion gap, metabolic acidosis, and a metabolic alkalosis also. Okay, so that's that. And then we have to do one more step. Always do all the steps. Compensation. Beautiful, so what's my formula? PCO2 equals my expected PCO2 equals 1.5 times bicarb plus 8. Okay, so 15 plus 8 is 23. And then that is here. Exactly the same. Okay, so I have two disorders here an anion gap metabolic acidosis and a metabolic alkalosis. Make up for a story for me about why your patient has that. So we'll call them septic with an NG tube. Okay, great, great. So that's an option. They could be septic with an lactic acidosis with an NG tube, or they could be have DKA and be dehydrated. So have a contraction alkalosis on top of their acidosis. Okay, okay. make sense? Yep. All right. We're gonna knock out one more. I'm gonna teach you a cool right. trick here though. Because okay. all we've talked about so far is ones that started out as metabolic acidosis. So that's all we know how to do. Okay. All right, so trick time. So what's the numbers on this one? 142, 3.2, 100, 20, 30, 1.2, 90, 756, and 22. Oh no! What's that? Yeah, so it's an alkalosis. I didn't give you any equations for how to work with alkalosis in this talk yet. I'm lost. Okay, so here's our trick, right? If we have an anion gap, we have an anion gap metabolic acidosis. So we can sort of bypass this step and figure out what the heck we're doing. Okay. So let's just skip down our other steps and go to our anion gap part. Well, how do we figure out an anion gap? Sodium minus chloride plus bicarb. Okay, for this person, our- 22. 22. Okay, so now we have to do our, so we have a gap, right? So we know right off the bat, we have an anion gap metabolic acidosis. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What's our next step? Delta gap. Okay. Was it delta gap equal? Uh, 
to what we had expected. Change in bicarb. Okay, so for this person, our delta gap is our expected change in bicarb, which is 22 minus normal. So it's 10. Okay, perfect, which is 10. And normal is what? How much we expect? A normal is what? The normal bicarb is? 24. 24. We expect a change of 10. So what do you expect it to be? 30. Uh, so we're going in the opposite direction, right? Acidosis makes it go down. Uh, so 10. So it went down 10. So we go from 24 uh, to 14. Minus 10 to 14. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So we expect our bicarb to be 14, but it's 20. So we're retaining. We're retaining bicarb. If you're retaining bicarb, what do we call that disorder? Metabolic alkalosis. Perfect. So now we're starting to understand why we have this high of a pH, okay? And then we have to do one more step from here, which is what? Winters. Winters. So our expected PCO2 equals, what is equal? What's winters? Five times bicarb plus eight. Perfect. Okay, so 20 times 1.5 is? 30. 30, so 38. And it's actually 22. 22. If you're blowing off extra CO2, respiratory acidosis. No, blowing off alkalosis. Exactly. Okay. Tell me a story about why your patient has those three disorders together. alkalosis would be either on a ventilator or salicylates. Salicylates okay. could do could two you? of those. Yep. And then the metabolic alkalosis could be uh, we have diuresis or have diuresis done, they're contracted, something like that. Perfect. So now you have a patient who has sepsis, you've over diuresis them, so they have a contraction alkalosis. That completely explains your picture and you know how to fix all of those things. Okay? All right. All right. So that's our starting with our metabolic acidosis, our acid base lecture for today. Do you have any questions about that? Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. What I want you to take from today is this your delta gap is your expected change in bicarb. Don't forget the change part. Okay? That's the part that gets confusing. And then don't forget, people often rattle off winner's formula, but they forget what it represents. So always think through that. So step one, what it is. Step two, whether it's respiratory or metabolic. And then I sort of think of it as 3A and 3B. You can do whichever one of those first you want to do, but you have to do both of them every time. And it'll take everywhere from a simple acid-base disorder to a complex triple acid-base disorder. Thanks, Peel.